Hello guys, I'm Sir Fancy and welcome in this tutorial where I will show you how to create simple procedurally generated content such as this one. Look at that. You can move it and put it whenever in the map you want and it will change its objects when, where, depending on where you put it. I will also show you a few little tricks how to do it even without placing it on the map, how to set up system that will place it automatically where you want it and also how I'm using it in a bigger scale in my indie game that I'm working on currently. Let's dive into it. Alright, so you can implement this in any project you want and let's simply start by creating new blueprint. We will need quite a few today. So let's create actor and let's call it asset underscore 01. And let's just open it. And before that, we will simply actually click on window and content browser, content browser 2. I just prefer to have content browser on a separate folder so I can preview meshes before adding them here. So let's go to meshes and open asset 01. All right, let's start in viewport. And first thing we will add is some sort of static mesh or skeletal mesh. It actually doesn't matter. So I would do static mesh, compile it and you don't need to set everything, anything here, but just to have something to demonstrate it with, let's put here this arc double, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever assets you want. I'm using just the ones that I use for my game because the project I'm using is from my game. Let's put it right here in the map. So now let's open construction script. And from here, take that static mesh put it right here and we will set it. Let's set static mesh. And now we need to figure out what mesh we want to put here. Let's say that for default, you want there to have a cube and connect it. Compile. You can see once the game will start, it will switch to cube. Super simple. Right now it's just setting this one object, this one M cube, which is Kinda, kinda useless. So what we will do is uh, make a variable out of it. Let's call it. Okay, let's make it a bit bigger, and call it mesh library underscore zero one because you can potentially have more of them. And now what you want to do is to delete it and make sure that you save it because uh, in this version of Unreal Engine four point twenty five there is a bug that prevents uh, the switching of variables sometimes because you need to click on this container and switch it to array. Make sure everything is safe so your game doesn't crash. That's what I'm talking about. As I have expected, the game crashed for me. So let's just try it again, open it and maybe it will even be switched. No, it is not. So let's try it again. Make sure that everything is saved, compile and it worked just fine. You know, there are things between I don't know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> so let's get back to construction script in, an, in our asset 01. And what we will do is to take this mesh library and get here a copy. And now if you click on that mesh library array as 01, there is nothing set. What it means is that it doesn't have any meshes that you can select from. So what I will do again is to look at this content browser or you can use your prepared meshes or whatever. And let's say that I want to use some of these bricks. I want always to have here some kind of break, but I don't know which one. And I want it to be kind of random. So let's open this mesh, mesh library, click on plus and as 01, I want to select this brick 01. Let's add another one, brick 02, another one, brick 03. And let's do actually four, break zero four. And you know what? Maybe sometimes I want actually to have here this damaged column. You can have here how many you want, doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you remember what the number is. And now we need to set it to pick one of them because right now it will automatically set it to zero, which means this one, which we don't want. So from this integer, let's put here a random integer in range. And then the range should be zero to Four. That means you have five different meshes it will choose from because uh, in programming you put zero as one. Alright, so if I compile it, let's minimize it all and look in the game. And you can see that we have here this column. But if I move it anywhere, you can see it's a bit too big. So what I can do is simply scale this down. Let's say that I want to scale to 0 0.2 for everything. I can move it whenever I want. 
just do whatever I want with it. And if I play the game, side viewport, do do do. You can see that brick is here, it's chilling, collisions are there, everything is fine. So what I can do now is of course to add something to it. This is kind of too small, so let's make it a bit bigger, 0.5 for example. And let's say that I want to add here another mesh, so let's simply duplicate it, da -da -da. put it here, and just repeat the process in construction script. Da -da -da. Let's put it here, and just connect here this mesh one, right here. And you can see that every time I move it, it will randomly switch. It is super cool. You can use it for whatever you want and add randomness to your game. But let's say that you want to use different instances of this blueprint, like you want to copy it and have these two objects uh, in different distance from each other, different than this one. So what you can do is to simply go back in this asset and we will start with adding here a new variable. That variable will be Oh, you know what, actually, let's do it differently. Let's go back to construction script and we will add here a scene component. That scene component will be, you name it, to object origin. Let's put it under a static mesh one and just to quickly demonstrate, let's add here another mesh super quickly and it will be always this, uh, what it will be, always barrel. I want always this to be a barrel and scale set to one. So make sure that object and everything is under object origin and you can move it however you want. So let's go to construction script and what we will do here is we will take the object origin and, just, and we need to set a relative location and even a rotation, we can set both. You know what, it will be actually much simpler if we will set transform. So let's set relative. No, I don't want to reset the relative transform. What I want to do is to press the like button because that's what you need to do right now. All right, that was kind of cringe. Let's continue. <laughs> so we will set relative transform, set relative transform right here and just connect it here. And with that relative transform, what you will do is to promote it to variable, promote it to variable, put it here call it object origin underscore transform or just the error and make sure that the variable is set to public it will you will have here this i and also what will be checked is instance ed editable this is same thing so now what you can do with each of these instances is let's say click on this one and right here you have new colon, which is object origin transform. That's that new variable we have just created. So let's open it and move it somewhere else. And look at that. I am controlling only one of these objects and the other one is unaffected. Very useful when you are adjusting it for a specific location. You can rotate it, change its direction, blah, blah, blah. You can even change its... Okay, that changing rotation definitely not with this axis. Not this one, this axis as well. So what the problem is right here with that rotation, you can see that it has origin here, which is quite unlikely, which is quite unlikely that it will be like that. So what we will do is to quickly set this to zero and zero, compile, and can see right now it's on its this space. So what I can do is to simply set this location back to zero and zero, and now let's set it to 300 and 200 X and Y axis. And now rotation should work just fine. You can see that it's now rotating on, on its own axis without any problems. They are on the completely same location, which means the barrel is overlapping the rock. We don't want that. Train Johnson would be quite unhappy about that. So let's do it right now. Now it should be finally pretty okay. But let's say that you are super lazy and you don't want to even put it anywhere in your level. You can actually create spawner. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's delete both of these. And what we will do is to go into classes and we will need point, target point. Look at that. Let's put, let's put one here and one will be here. Duplicate it, another one here. And one more time. So right now I have four target points put anywhere in the map. 
you can see them right here. So now what we'll need to do is to create another blueprint, blueprint actor, and let's call it assets underscore spawner. And what this will simply do, you can actually even do this in level blueprint, it's up to you, I prefer to do it with specific blueprint. So let's go to construct, oh no, we actually need to event begin play, and right now we will get all actors of class, that class will be target point, and from it we will need to take this out actor and put here a loop for each loop, connect it to executional pin, and from here you want to spawn actor from class, that class should be asset 01, and we will take its array element and let's say get world location, let's do just location, it should be fine, spawn transform, split structure pane and connect it right here, compile. Now let's see if it works, if it does I will explain how it all works, if it doesn't I will probably start hating myself and do something else with my life. Let's put it here and try to simulate. Oh, no, don't launch the game, don't launch the game, don't launch it, Houston. <laughs> and simulate. And look at that, guys, it worked. Uh, thanks God, I wasn't sure. <laughs> anyway, so it took all these target points and created array out of them, which means array of consisted of four different objects. Then I used for each loop, which is basically node that will take each aspect of that array, which in this case it means each point and do something with it. Then you can connect it to complete it and let's say print here done or it's generated or good work or in best case press the like button. Then it simply spawned actor for asset 01 and as it's transform its location it used world location of that element and those elements were of course these target points. So that simply means you can now take these target points, oh, where are you, where are you going, my dear, move it somewhere here, and simulate, and you can see it will be right here, grandiose. The, the thing with this is that you are procedurally generating it after the game starts, so you don't need to use these public variables, you can't use them really. So what I would recommend you to do is to just put this further away so it doesn't overlap, let's put it, I don't know, 300, alright, that's, I said 300, mate. Oh, we are actually setting it here, that's the problem. So let's delete this construction script because if we are randomly generated it on the, on the start of the game, we don't need it. And let's say this object origin, reset it because it went somewhere weirdly where we, we don't want it and just move it and rotate it. Do -do -do. Compile and now if we rotate it, you can see that it spawned it anywhere on the map. You can use this for whatever, you can add here as many objects as you want. In the mind game you can see that the player has nothing, everything is empty, no meshes, but if I simulate it, it will spawn this zone. Right now I don't have a setup it yet, but this will be always a little bit different. So if I start the game, you can see that it looks quite impressive. And you can use it even for this if you want, all up to you. Alright, that's everything for this tutorial. If you want to know more about my games that I'm developing, there are devlogs which you can watch somewhere here, hopefully is the link. And you can join the Discord to talk with other devs, maybe get a help if you need with something, or just show us what you are working on. Or if you want, you can follow me on the Instagram, I'm posting there daily updates about my game, my games, not gays, Psh, don't talk about it. And that's about it, so fancy, out!